Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video we'll be taking a look at two of the superstars of the CPU cooling world. We are going to be taking a look at the Scythe Fuma 2 and also the Noctua NHU 12S. Which one should you buy? Keep watching to find out. Okay, so in today's video, we'll be taking a look at uh, two of, potentially, I would say, my favourite two coolers at the moment in the kind of 50 to 60 pound range on various platforms for AMD and Intel. Now, both of these coolers are fantastic coolers, to be honest with you. I wouldn't say either one of them is inherently a bad cooler. Both of them have got some really, really cool features, and both of them have got some very good mounting options, and also excellent RAM clearance and all that kind of good stuff. Now, there are some subtle differences between the two, as you probably know already, but they are quite subtle, and spoiler alert, if you're looking for just raw temperatures, essentially, both of them are kind of very, very similar. There's very little between them, but we'll take a look at the graphs and the bar charts a little bit later on, so you can see the specific differences on my particular setup, which obviously may reflect what you have at home. Now, in this particular video, we won't be doing an installation of this particular cooler. We have already done a separate video of that, so as to try and keep the content to a uh, more manageable size. So if you want to see how easy this is to install on an AM4 platform, you can click on the link up here and you can see how all that works out. In this video, we're going to go through, do a quick unboxing, show you what you get actually in the box, and then we'll head straight into the temperature tests on the system. So let's take a more of a deep dive into the Fuma 2. So this is Scythe Fuma 2. Uh, it's got a twin tower design and also a twin fan design you can if you want to you can actually add on a third fan they do include in the packet extra brackets so you can actually put another fan on the back should you wish to or alternatively you can actually swap out the fan on the front for a slightly upgraded model now there's probably a reason why you might want to do that but essentially as it comes out of the box it's pretty much in its ideal format you can if you want to make it a little bit louder and a little bit more powerful etc etc but again we'll touch on that a little bit later on as we go through the testing so as you can see on the packaging it's got Pretty wide support for CPU sockets, including Intel's 1200 series socket. At the moment, they don't appear to have a 1700 socket adapter kit. I'm sure as time goes on, that will be a thing. But as of today, when I checked on the website, there isn't actually an option for a 1700 mounting kit. So if you are looking at the latest 12th gen Intel, then maybe this isn't the one for you just yet. If on the other hand, you're using AM4, AM3, or any of the other AM sockets, then this is going to be absolutely fine and is actually incredibly easy to install. Again, as you'll find out from that video up there. On the box, it goes into some of the specifications, which uh, you can probably see already, but it gives you the idea about the fans. So what is slightly unusual about this particular cooler are the fans actually mounted on the front here. The front one is a 15 mil fan and the one on the back is a 25 mil fan. Now the 15 mil fan gives you extremely good RAM clearance and also it does have swoop back heat pipes, which will, again, keep the radiators a little bit further back to give you that better RAM clearance. So if you are using four sticks of RAM on your motherboard, there's an extremely high chance that this is gonna be absolutely fine and won't obstruct them at all, even if they are slightly higher profile units. The fans also do a slightly unique thing, which uh, I actually haven't seen before, and that is they actually spin in opposite rotations. Now the idea behind this is to increase static pressure and improve cooling performance. Whether that's true or not, I really couldn't tell you. I haven't tried it with two fans spinning exactly the same way. Maybe that's something we can do in a follow-up video. If you want to see that, let us know in the comment section below. One of the highlights of this particular cooler is the mounting system. Now, I think they've probably taken a few leaves out of Noctua's book in this regard. The mounting system, especially for the AM4 and AM3 platforms, is particularly good and is particularly easy to do. So if you're one of those people, like me, where you're swapping coolers in and out all the time, this is actually a really easy one to work on. Not quite as easy as the NHU12S, which is uh, one of the things which counts as a positive for Noctua and potentially a negative for the Fuma 2. But again, if you're thinking of just installing this and forgetting it, then that isn't a problem at all. But if you're looking at a cooler which you want to have quick and easy access to remove easily, it's relatively easy. Again, as you can see from the installation video, you get an idea of that. Essentially, it is just two screws, but it can be a little bit fiddly due to the where those screws are actually positioned. In terms of technical specifications, I'll put those on the screen for you now, but essentially what it boils down to are the fans. Both of the fans are extremely quiet fans, which is one of the key selling points of this. It is an extremely quiet cooler. The fans on here have a minimum rotation of about 300 RPM, plus or minus a little bit, and a maximum rotational speed of 1200 RPM, which 
counts in two ways. It is a positive, obviously for quiet computing and wind noise, all that kind of stuff, but it does limit the upper end of what this cooler is actually capable of. Again, we'll check that a little bit later. So looking at the accessories included in the box, we go through, I've got them all laid out here so you can see them pretty easily. You get, obviously, you get an instruction leaflet, which is uh, actually pretty decent and very easy to follow, very kind of Ikea-esque. So yeah, not a lot of uh, words, but plenty of pictures, so it makes it nice and easy to install. Also included, you get a long screwdriver. Now this is actually imperative. It's extremely difficult to install this without this screwdriver or a similar screwdriver. So yeah, don't lose this, you will need it. The way that this actually attaches to the actual computer is there is a channel which this goes down through and then there is a screw at the bottom on each side. So again, you can see how that all works in the video we did, but it's uh, yeah, it's a simple method, but it's also a little bit fiddly as well, if that makes any sense whatsoever. Anyway, back to what we get in the box. So the Intel side of things, you get the Intel backplate, which is pretty much pre-configured out of the box. There's also a little sticky pad as well to go on the back just to uh, aid the motherboard, etc., etc. Uh, whether you want to use that or not. Obviously, if you're using Intel, that is suitable for the various different socket types. If you actually want to change the size, all you do is pull off one of the plastic caps there, and these move around. Pretty much the standard deal, which we see on quite a lot of coolers these days. Can be a little bit fiddly getting it into the right place, but again, it's all laid out clearly in the instructions. Also as well, there are these four kind of screw sections for the Intel setup. I haven't done Intel install on this. If you do want to see that, let us know in the comment section and we'll try and do a quick tutorial on how to install it on an Intel system. Moving on to the AMD side of things, so things are considerably easier and again, very, very Noctua-esque in their installation process. So there are four standoffs, which go on top of the standard AM4 blanking plates. Then you've got two brackets, which attach in the kind of normal way. These are actually used for both Intel and AMD or AM4. So the AM4 is the kind of inner holes there and the outer ones are the Intel. So this is really good because they're kind of reusing the same piece of metal to do the same job in two places. Although for some of you on the AM4 platform, if you're using a setup where there's a lot of VRM activity or things going on around it, you may find that the actual enhanced width for the Intel setup may slightly impede on some of those AMD motherboards. So do check the uh, dimensions of your motherboard, etc., etc., before you go ahead and buy one. Last of all, there's four screws, which is a usual deal. So that screws down through the back plate into the spacers and into the AM4 back plate. So very simple, very easy to do. It does come with spring clips to actually mount the fans, which again, we've got two fans on here. So we've got the 15 mil on the front here, which is the narrow one. And then there's a 25 mil Again, both are low-ish RPM, up to 1200 RPM. And they do include an additional two clips as well. So if you want to, you can either swap out the front fan for another one of the 25 mil fans. So you can have two 25s on there, giving you a little bit more power. Or potentially, if you want to, you could mount another third fan on the rear. Again, you're gonna have to take into account clearance for VRMs, that kind of stuff. Although they have done a very good job straight away. So as we look at the cooler itself, if we get these wires out of the way, so you can see there's a really big channel cut out the back there. So if you think in your motherboard, this is where your kind of IO section is gonna be and your VRM coolers, that kind of stuff. So you've got a really nice bit of clearance there, raised. You are obviously losing some of your thermal capacity because some of the fins are cut down, but I don't think it's gonna make a huge difference there. And it also is gonna aid installation. You've got those swoop back pipes, as you can see. So it does swoop back very much. And the RAM clearance is gonna be absolutely brilliant with that really low profile fan on the front. Obviously, like I said, if you do swap out the front fan for something else, then that is going to increase the kind of distance that it comes across and may then start impeding on some of your RAM sticks. Looking at the top, so we've got a nice finish actually on the top, which is where this does benefit over the Notcho, the NHU12S. This, in my opinion, actually looks considerably nicer. So we've got this kind of nice black and gray look going on. The heat pipes themselves are still exposed in that nickel finish and this top section, we've got two black top plates there with the Scythe logo on each one, which does kind of take away from it a little bit. And generally because of the chrome actually reflecting a lot of the black actually on these plates here, they don't stand at a mile. Okay, let me know what you think in the comment section. From what I can see, from my own eyes and what I can see from the camera reflections, they actually in the reflection pretty much look black anyway. So yeah, that isn't gonna be something of too much concern. Moving around to the bottom, so we can see the base plate. So we've got six six mil heat pipes on here, which are kind of swooped around, as you can see in that nice section there. Really nice cold plate, very, very nicely finished. And not quite a mirror finish, but very, very close to it. And the flatness actually is, it does appear to me, 
I haven't got the tools to measure it, unfortunately, but uh, it does seem exceptionally smooth. And doing some mountings in various positions on the motherboard, etc., it does seem to have an extremely good coverage. Also from this bottom section, you can see the screws there where they attach to the kind of crossbars for the mounting system. So overall, it's a very nice unit. Relatively heavy, we're looking at pretty much a thousand grams for the whole thing with the fans, etc. So there is a little bit of weight to it, which does obviously give you a lot of thermal capacity. But the question you're probably asking is, is it actually any good? Well, let's take a look at the facts and figures and you can work out for yourselves. So during my testing, this is with a Ryzen 9 3900, as uh, we often do here, because it's the most powerful processor I have here, so there's not really much else I can do. We do have precision boost set to auto, and the ambient temperature in the room is approximately 23 degrees, give or take a few. Uh, it did fluctuate 22.8 to 23, so kind of 0.2s in it. Your house will be different and temperatures do fluctuate. Unless you're lucky enough to have AC and you've got a constant temperature, then I think those uh, margins of error can be accommodated for. But anyway, let's get into the results. So let's start off looking at some scores. So first of all, let's look at Cinebench R23. Now, first of all, the Noctua, the NHU12, has actually come up with a score of 18,235, which is a, a perfectly respectable score for the setup we have here. The Scythe Thuma 2 actually does beat it by uh, a reasonable amount at 18,403. Now, to be honest with you, when we look at the temperatures as we go through this, and also the RPMs, noise, etc., the difference really kind of, I did do a few runs just to validate it, and every time, actually, the Noctua did come in behind the Fuma 2. So the Fuma 2, if you're looking for all-out performance when it comes to rendering, that kind of thing, especially with this kind of setup, with a Ryzen 9 3900, then clearly this is going to be the one for you. And that's actually very, very quiet in doing so. The fan RPMs, again, only up to 1200 RPM, so it is a quiet performer, but it does lack that raw performance. Anyway, let's look at the performance in the temperatures. So we've got three groups of temperatures. So we've got a low, a medium, and a high. So basically the low is the lowest recorded temperature in the system under idle and basically just being left to its own devices. Medium was just after going on the internet, looking at a few web pages, that kind of thing, and kind of averaging out those temperatures. The highest temperature is the highest temperature recorded under a full system load. Now this is with my case, which is the Neutron Labs Galaxy W05, and with my usual fan profile. So as you can see, the lowest temperature recorded on the Scythe Fuma beats the Noctua NHU12 by uh, actually quite a few degrees there. So the low temperature, we've got 31.4 for the Scythe, and we've got 35.0 for the Noctua. So certainly the terms of the thermal mass does make up for a lot in these idle conditions. In the medium section, we've got a medium result of 43 degrees C for the Scythe Fuma 2, and 45 for the Noctua, which again, so we are beating it by a little bit, but the definitely the Noctua is catching up a little bit. Where it gets really interesting is right at the very end there, so the highest recorded temperatures. So we're looking at a high of 72.3 with the Fuma 2, and the Noctua NHU12S comes out with a high of 73 degrees C. Now obviously there are those slight variations in room temperature, which could accommodate that. One thing we do have to consider as well are the RPMs of these particular units. Now the Noctua is actually running at around about 1500 RPM and is definitely audible over the system fans, etc, etc. You can hear it. Whereas with the Scythe Fuma 2, even though it's only at 1200 RPM, so it's using 300 RPMs less approximately, it is essentially silent. Even on the full load, you could if you wanted to actually in your system, there's no reason why not. You could set the fans, set the fan curve just to be 100% leave it on 100% all the time. You possibly would notice it in certain very quiet instances or if you've got an exceptionally quiet noise floor in your room, but otherwise you could run this at 100% all the time if you really wanted to. It really is that quiet, which is, for me, I would say personally, it's key selling point. So overall, really not a great deal to kind of split the two between them. So at the moment here in the UK, we're looking at the Fuma 2 being approximately 50 pounds uh, on amazon.co.uk. Whereas the Noctua NHU12S looking somewhere in the region of about 55 to 60 pounds. So they're very, very close. Again, if you're looking at spending that sort of money on a cooler, especially an air cooler, then either one of them is an excellent choice. I would say arguably the Noctua is the easier to install because we have a lot more clearance. We've only got a single tower. It's actually quite good that even though the Noctua is only a single tower design and a single fan design, it does actually keep up with the Fuma 2. Now, I guess that is down to Noctua's engineering and also there are slightly higher noise profile. But I think it does uh, it does say a lot about the actual products. 
Again, neither one of them are bad. Definitely the NHU12S is considerably easier to install. We've only got one fan, one set of fan clips, and really easy access to the screws for installing and removal. Whereas the Fuma 2 does things considerably quieter, but we do have two sets of spring clips to install on the fans. The middle fan is actually a little bit on the tricky side to install for some people. I've actually found it a few times, just trying to move the fan around, the clips actually get caught. There is a very close tolerance between the front stack and the rear stack. So in terms of ease of use, definitely the Notchua wins every time. But in terms of noise profile, which is weird to say because Notchua are essentially well known in the business for having possibly the quietest fans on the market, but certainly the Cypher Fuma 2 does beat it in that regard. So anyway, that is my findings with these two coolers. Let me know what you think about them. Which one would you go for? Are you uh, turned off by Noctua's brown style? In which case you'd have to spend a little bit more for the Chromax version, whereas this essentially is kind of blacked out from the factory to the most extent. Do you like the look of a twin tower? Is it gonna be easier for you? All those things I wanna hear from you in the comments section. Anyway, that's gonna wrap this one up. I've been Mike, this is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.